Mm. All right, let's, I'm going to call to order our regular monthly meeting of the Zionsville Board of Parks and Recreation. It is Wednesday, May 12th. And I'll do a roll call for members present. My name is Tim Cassidy. I'm the president of the board. John Stair, vice president. Here. John Wollenberg, secretary, are you here? Here. John Wollenberg? He's I'm here. Oh, okay. I hadn't, I, great. All right. We don't get to see your face. We just see a telephone icon. Yeah. Our, Sorry, I had to call in uh, from Lions Park. Sorry about that. No problem. No problem at all. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah. Uh, Jill Pack. Here. John Solovich. John, I saw your face. Are you there? Can you check in? Can you say yay? John? He's definitely here, but it seems like he can't hear you. Right. You know. I'm, t I'm texting him now. Okay. John Solovich? John Solovich, are you there? Can you hear us? We can see you. I don't think you can hear. John Salovich, can you hear us? I don't think we can. All right, I'm gonna move move on and John can give us the thumbs up if he, when he can hear us and check in. Aaron Bidwell. I'm here. Sarah Moore. All right, Sarah may be joining us later. So uh, there being a quorum, let me just say that this is our first live meeting in 13, 14 months. So we're trying to get used to the hybrid format. Please, uh, yeah, we may have to bear with one another as we move through this meeting. Um, all right, are there any comments on the submitted minutes from our April 14th meeting? If not, is there a motion to approve them? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written. Second. Is there a second? Member Stair has moved. I can second that. Member Pack seconds the board minutes. Okay. Uh, how shall we take uh, votes here? Joe, what's the typical? Uh, So a voice roll call, okay. We'll, well, we've been doing that on Zoom, so we will do a voice roll call a vote of the motion to approve the minutes of April 14th as submitted. John Stair. Aye. John Wollenberg. John Wollenberg. Jill Pack. Aye. John. Aye. That was an Sorry, eye from John. Mute. That okay, is an eye. Yes. John Wollenberg has uh, said aye. John Solovich, can you hear us yet? Aye. All right. John is checked in. Aaron Bidwell. Aye. I also vote aye. So the motion carries six to nothing. Okay. Now it's time in our meeting for public presentations. If there is anyone, a member of the public, that is joining us. Now is your time to uh, ask questions or make a, a proposal or comment. Anyone out there? I would also say that if you need technical assistance in logging into or speaking, Oh, that sounded familiar. Yeah, if uh, if you do have, need technical assistance, you can contact Joe Rust, uh, our technical advisor at J R U S T J Rust at Zionsville-in.gov. 
All right, there being no public presentations, we'll move on with staff reports. And let me acknowledge the presence of our park superintendent, Jared Logston, our parks board attorney, John Burris, and Joe Rust, as I said, our technical advisor. So Jared, turn, over, turn it over to you for staff reports. All right, just like to uh, send out a couple updates that I think are noteworthy for the month. Um, the parks department acquired a wreck mobile. There is an old ambulance that was used as a forensics crime lab uh, from the police department. It was underutilized and they were looking to get rid of it. So uh, through some deals, they have generously offered to donate that to the parks department. So we will retrofit that ambulance and provide a new wrap on it and have a, a, a literal vehicle for getting recreation into our parks and be able to provide that pop-up programming. So we're excited about that and we're moving forward. Does it look like an ambulance? The, it is an ambulance. <laughs> um, the lights have been removed and we will have a nice recreation friendly wrap on it shortly. <laughs> I'll anxiously wait there. Yeah, I'll think it'll kind of like a, I'll mix it up for a hearse <laughs> coming for me. You'll definitely see it around town, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, the Nature Center opened on April 13th and since has 649 walk-ins, which I think is astounding with our new partnership inside of the library. Um, from uh, the maintenance side, we've had over 50 instances of graffiti in the past month. There is a uh, surge going on in the community right now. So luckily that seems to be um, fading a little bit right now, but our maintenance crews have been very busy addressing that. We have a full camp roster for the summer. That's 282 uh, children that'll be able to attend camp this summer. And the golf course was uh, generated 38,000 in sales for the uh, month of April. So it's been a great year, great start to the golf course. Uh, one last thing to bring up, I have been in conversations with the cultural district and we're identifying ways we can begin to partner and improve the community either through uh, amenities or uh, programming. And one of the things we began to discuss was the option of creating a mural walk within the uh, rail trail. So we have several tunnels and underpasses and uh, just beginning to flesh out what that might look like and what new users that might attract to our rail trail once complete. So I'd just like to mention that and see if there's any comment or reservations before we move forward and try to identify a funding source and develop that part partnership further. Yeah, I have a comment about that. Um, I, I think that we saw on the traffic control box on Main Street that painting murals can be a little bit controversial. I, I would like to see some sort of guidelines in place so that we're not raising the ire of people and beautifying those tunnels rather than creating a point of controversy. I think that's a great point. And I would like to welcome some form of uh, public survey to kind of narrow down what maybe the theme is and then let the artist take it from there. So that would be one way to include the public and uh, potentially avoid some of that. Well, we live in a divisive time. And Very true. I don't think it's good to be the business of the parks department to create more division. So just, just a thought. That's a fair point. Can I ask what it is? Is it just painting the inside of the tunnels or what is that was the kind of block? Yep, that is kind of the initial thought. So uh, what, more or less triggered this line of thinking uh, besides a scheduled call with the cultural district is our uh, tunnels were tagged several times within this past month. That's partially why I mentioned that. So if we could create a canvas and feature some form of art, and then there is the clear coat uh, product you can put on that to protect it and then remove uh, future graffiti. Um, I think we could serve two purposes. One, protect our tunnels from that unintentional tagging, but also invite a new user group that maybe isn't into walking, but they are into the arts and culture. So if we can invite a new portion of Zionsville or the greater community to come inside and uh, visit our rail trail, I think that's a great um, way to bring in new users. Who, do you know who technically is the governing over that? Is it, is it us? Um, that would be uh, decided oh, further department. on. Um, so it would be our tunnels along the rail trail, which is our linear park. Um, Obviously we would probably wanna bring in uh, public works as well as the cultural district um, as we collaborate yeah, would, on this. I would even 
think about narrow it down for recreation theme period, just because it's going through our parks and it's part of the parks. So, yep. Or uh, the rail line or, you know, there's a lot of yep. different uh, history. Yeah. Uh, parts of Zionsville we could really capture within that. So those are all things I'd want to explore further. And uh, that is it for staff reports right now. I'll have more on uh, any details on that project moving forward as they develop. All right. Uh, so nothing else on uh, maintenance, uh, recreation services or golf, correct? Correct. All right, let's move on to Roger Burris, get our his uh, monthly report. So uh, we still have lots of things going on, the usual contracts and uh, some bids that you'll hear about under new business uh, on some of the things that, that have been kind of dragging on. I'm pleased to report that we finally have a commitment from the Notarani uh, Mortgage Company to, to execute that partial release. Just confirm that today. Um, we've got a survey coming because they wanted to stake um, those boundaries. Um, so we're, everybody's clear on, on the extent of our 30 foot strip. Um, just because it's been so long since you approved this, we're gonna need a, a check to the owners for uh, $25,000, which was, that was authorized some time ago, but, but we'll need to get that in the works now so I can schedule closing. Um, another, another thing related to the um, South Rail Trail and, and North um, completion, we had two parcels that were being held by the Friends of Boone County Trails um, because when we apply for grants, you know, we don't, if we're not the owner of the property, it helps us with our grant application because then we can use the value of the property as part of our match. So given, you know, now that we have that grant application accepted and approved, um, it's time to, to get those transferred to us. So I've prepared that deed and, and been in touch with the Friends of Boone County Trails. Um, they had some interesting things that I passed on to Jared and, and to Tim as well, uh, but uh, that's in the works to get that done. And I think that's it, unless anybody has any questions for me. Did you say you needed a motion for us to uh, authorize? I know uh, it was authorized to make, Yeah, I, it was, but so, I'd be happy to uh, yeah, make like a motion to. that we authorize uh, consummation of the purchase of the Notarani uh, um, uh, parcel as uh, previously identified uh, and authorize uh, Jared and our park attorney to carry the funds, uh, the agreed purchase price of $25,000 to uh, do that closing. And to execute the necessary documents. And to execute all and any necessary documents to close the transaction. Is there a second to my motion? Uh, I'll second it. I'll second Tim's motion about uh, authorizing the purchase of the property at the right. Southern Rail Trail. Any more questions about that uh, purchase or the motion to approve or finalize the purchase? If not, I'll do a roll call vote. John Stair. Aye. John Wallenberg. Aye. John. John Wallenberg. We lost everyone. We may have. He said aye. Sorry if I stole control, John. All right. Jill Pack. Aye. John Solovich. I said aye. I heard John Wallenberg say hi. It's hearsay that John Wallenberg said aye. John, did our John Wallenberg, uh, do you approve the motion to consummate the acquisition of the Notarani property? John Wallenberg? All right, we've lost contact with John Wallenberg. Uh, Aaron Bidwell. I can also confirm he said aye, and I say aye. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I say aye. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right. I also say aye. So the motion carries uh, six in the affirmative, uh, none uh, against it. All right, let's move on to new business then. And I'll turn it over to 
Jared, and this has to do with our RFP for the Starkey SP3 stairway and Turkey Foot Pedestrian Bridge. Go ahead, Jared. Thank you. So last month we did put up bid the Starkey SP3 project and paired it with the Turkey Foot Pedestrian Bridge improvements to uh, hopefully catch the eye of uh, a better applicant pool for the bids. Um, the bid did close on Monday and we received none. So from here we will uh, attempt to gather three quotes and negotiate a price for final selection on that project. You, uh, Roger was suggesting that we make a motion authorizing uh, that, you know, given that these combined two projects were put out for bid and we were unable to uh, to uh, generate any any bids that we authorized Jared uh, to uh, solicit uh, offers from uh, three contractors for one or both for each of these projects and that uh, he be authorized to uh, enter into uh, any, any meaningful, fair, and equitable arrangement that he can come up with uh, uh, with, these, uh, with these potential contractors. So any questions? Again, this, Roger, do you want to clarify well, your suggestion? Say, it makes perfect sense it to does, me. You know, I think, I was one of the ones who thought, you know, gee, if we combine these projects, we might attract more bidders. And I guess maybe it's a lesson in how things can change that, that you just never expect. Um, I mean, we have had situations before where we didn't get bids and, a, and it's, it's like the size of the job or something. It's like a niche type situation where, you know, maybe everybody's busy or, or it's like we're not, it's not big enough for the major contractors. It's, it's, um, but it's but it's bigger than your local handyman. So, um, so basically, the the statutes, if it's a project that's less than one hundred fifty thousand, uh, allows you to go through a, a request for proposals situation rather than the the full public bidding. And there's some other things that can be done a little differently in order to attract, you know, responsible contractors who could handle something like this. So, so that's our plan, uh, but you know, basically the motion, you're also kind of determining that, well, you know, we tried the public bidding, it didn't work obviously. So, um, so we're gonna go with plan B and hopefully that'll work. So it's all, you know, we still have to do things openly and, and negotiate in good faith and things like that. But um, we're gonna have to change things in order to get these projects done and hopefully we will. Any questions about that? I do have Rogers some language in front of me, so I'll I'll uh, take the liberty of making a motion as follows: that since uh, it is term, it is uh, it is uh, we found it not practical uh, to uh, obtain uh, bids through a formal bidding process for the Turkey Foot Pedestrian Bridge and the SP3 Stairway Project that we authorize our superintendent to seek proposals, three proposals for these two projects or for each of the two projects and invite uh, uh, up to three, again, three firms to submit proposals and that we authorize our superintendent uh, to contract for this work if an acceptable proposal is received on either or both projects together. Is there a second to That's that motion? motion? I'll second that motion. John Stair seconds my motion. Any further questions or comments? All right, then we'll do a roll call vote. John Stair. Aye. John Wollenberg. Aye. Jill Pack. Aye. John Solovich. Aye. Aaron Bidwell. Aye. I also vote aye, so the motion passes uh, six in the affirmative and none voting against it. All right, anything more on those uh, two smaller projects, Jared? If not, we'll move on to our, uh, our request for bids and the status uh, of that, our request for bids for the South Rail Trail extension. 
So same uh, timeline, this project was also bid out last month and it closed on Tuesday at one o'clock. And we did receive three bids for this, which I will uh, put on the screen. All right, I apologize, I can no longer read those three bid uh, names, but the lowest bid with all of the required documentation was HIS Construction with a bid of $1,210,000. Um, this is below what our uh, cost estimate was for this project, so that is uh, very rare in this day and age with the booming construction. So. Um, I would like to make the recommendation that we proceed with the HIS uh, bid for the Southern Rail Trail expansion. Just as a reminder, Trish McClellan and REA prepared the design and contract construction documents for this uh, project. It involves replacement of the uh, rail trail bridge uh, that overpasses Starkey Avenue the paving of the uh, South Rail Trail from near that area all the way to Vonterra, the sprucing up of the top of the 100 foot bridge uh, and connecting to Overly Warman Park and to Vonterra. So that's great. Yeah, all right, Roger. Yes, that's a very, uh, very nice, um, Situation, kind of the opposite of the last one we talked about. Um, well, I think Tricia was gonna send me the bid. Um, I haven't reviewed it yet, but, um, but I think Tricia indicated that, that in her opinion, it was, it was entirely responsive to the request for bids. Uh, so if you could just add a provision to your motion that it's subject to my approval, then I think it'll be, we can go ahead and award that bid tonight. Any further questions? All right. Is so there? I just a, a, I just a, go ahead, John. Do you, do you think there's any interest that HIS has in the, you know, Starkey Bridge? I mean, they're right there. It's like, they, were they aware of this that bid? Well, the Starkey Bridge is a part of what they have bid on, so that that will be included in the one point two million dollars, the replacement of the Starkey. Uh, are you okay. talking about the Starkey stair, the Starkey Park stairs? Stairs, yeah. Yes, yes, they might. Right. Uh, I actually talked to the foreman today. I was out at Overly Warman Park and yeah, they might be, they have carpenters that'll be doing boardwalks uh, at Overly Warman Park. So mm -hmm. they would be uh, prime candidates to, uh, to uh, invite a proposal from them. And Absolutely. They, so. And uh, I did approach them while the bid was open and ask if they would like to uh, submit for that as well. So. You mean it could get even better? <laughs> All right, so is there a motion uh, subject to Roger's uh, final approval to select uh, the bid of uh, and award our uh, work for the South Rail Trail extension uh, to HIS constructors and to authorize our superintendent uh, uh, to sign, again, subject to uh, to council uh, uh, approval to sign our, so it's, it's really sort of a standard contract at this point with HIS constructors. Is there a motion to? I'll, I'll make that motion. John Salovich has made the motion to award the contract to HIS and authorize subject to legal review, Jared to uh, sign the contract. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. John Stair makes the second. Are there any final questions or comments? That will do a roll call vote. John Stair. Aye. John Wallenberg. Aye. Jill Peck. Aye. John Solovich. Aye. Aaron Bidwell. Aye. I also vote aye. So the motion carries six to uh, six in the affirmative, uh, zero uh, against it. All right, Trish, anything else on that contract that uh, we can do to, to, to help you or HIS constructors get the ball rolling? 
Great. All right. Thank you. And thank you for, yeah, that's great news. Uh, that's very encouraging to see that one uh, up and running. And that will be on a timeline uh, for 2021, basically. Really? Wonderful. Okay. Next item on new business is a rail trail memorial bench donation or donations, plural. I'm not sure. Go ahead, Jared. <clears throat> All right, trying to share my screen again. So this month again, we have received uh, two donation requests, uh, this time both along the rail trail. Um, I think it's another great opportunity to provide uh, seating uh, for this amenity um, and service uh, those that would like to rest more often and also provide the opportunity to memorialize a uh, loved one. Uh, so the two um, applications were uh, approximately on the map, uh, just north of Mulberry and near Oak. And uh, they would take place near the overpasses just off to the side in the grass. Animal. And uh, with park board approval, we'll move forward with the application, uh, receive payment and purchase the benches. Uh, where, where are the two locations again? Oh, I lost. Yeah. Uh, the one is um, just north of Oak Street. After you get out of the bridge, there's that clearing in the grass. Um, either the left or right could be uh, used, whichever works best for drainage and other considerations like that. Uh, the other is just North Mulberry uh, Fields. Um, and these were two spots that were loved uh, by the individuals being memorialized for uh, walking the rail trail. Is there not already a bench by the Christian church in the area just north of uh, Oak Street? Yeah, and we took that into consideration and also talked about putting it on the south side of the Oak Street uh, bridge for that one. Um, and the consideration there was, um, they're actually not visible where we might put, uh, this memorial. So they would be redundant. Yes. They're pretty close in proximity, but it's two different, uh, opportunities, one for memorialization and one for, uh, more opening gathering. Um, Okay, and what is our process on these? We just uh, need a, a motion from the board to approve the two bench memorials as submitted to the meeting. Is that what, what we're gonna be doing going forward with these bench memorials? Yep. All right. And just so you know, we, uh, we do kind of take into consideration the location and the need um, before we bring these requests before the park board. So. We don't want to become inundated with uh, too many benches, absolutely. So we do take that into consideration. Uh, this reminds me, Roger, so the friends have some benches as well, composites. So you guys are talking about how to source benches or you know, kind of yeah. our standard design and how that might work going forward. All right, is there a motion to approve these two benches as uh, memorial benches as submitted by Gerald, Jared? I would make that motion that we approve the two benches as submitted. Is there a second to Jill Pack's motion? I'll second it. Sean Stair has seconded the motion to approve the two memorial benches. Any further questions? Do a roll call vote. John Stair? Aye. John Wollenberg? Aye. Jill Pack? Aye. John Solovich? Aye. Aaron Bidwell? Aye. And I also vote aye. So the motion carries six in the affirmative, none uh, negative. Okay, the next item of new business is our community center planning. Just wanted to give an update on this project. Um, Seven proposals were received and we developed a review committee comprised of three parks board members, the mayor, deputy mayor, and other department heads. Uh, the committee reviewed the, uh, the proposals and scored them. And now we are collaborating on which firms to uh, 
extend an invitation to have a formal presentation before stakeholders. So the, the process is ongoing. I just wanted to give an update. All right, and again, this, uh, this background, these are proposals to work in a public, with the community in a very public way to uh, find out uh, uh, what uh, might be in demand for a community center uh, uh, to consider uh, and consult on financing for a community center. Uh, you know, aquatics might, uh, of course, be involved in a community center. So that's, uh, that's a big item to, to try to nail. Um, so the you know, seven firms who are interested in, in working with us on this process, they're, they're great. So they were very exciting proposals from, from all of them. So the interest was high and that was great to see. John, do you want to say anything? You've been involved with the community well, uh, center project. One thing that, that, uh, that you didn't mention is the, the partnerships that we're exploring too, that, this isn't necessarily something that the town is going to go on its own uh, to, to accomplish, that there are uh, partnerships in the community being explored as well. So there's, there's a lot to consider here. And I think that the proposals we've gotten have been pretty comprehensive uh, in, in bringing this project from beginning to end. Uh, we just need to uh, find the one that's going to be the one that's going to be our partner going forward and eliminate the other six. No, I agree. And when I said financing, uh, that, that uh, involved yeah, some creative <laughs> use of partners. Uh, yeah. So certainly have that in mind. So, all right, let's move on to the Zionsville Winter Festival. All right, so this is uh, still very early into the project, but uh, due to approaching deadlines on securing the assets, I wanted to bring it before you in this uh, pre preliminary concept. Um, so in response to our 2020 recreational programming uh, study of the community, one of the top identified things were these large community gatherings to be held in Zionville rather than having to go out of town to have those celebrations. So I think considering the impact of the pandemic and as we're beginning, just beginning to emerge from that, I think we need to begin to plan to offer this opportunity for the community not only to reconnect, but to also potentially strengthen our local businesses and our local Zionsville commerce by bringing in outside attention and just to provide this amenity for uh, fun recreation in the winter seasons and in collaboration with the existing holiday celebrations in Zionsville. So I think we do need to keep it a little smaller this year as the inaugural event and then uh, become a tradition in Zionsville that we build on every year. So what I'm proposing for this, this first year would be an ice skating rink at Mulberry Fields. Um, this would, uh, has gone over very well in neighboring communities. And actually, in with speaking with them, they were rather excited that Zionsville might approach an ice rink because they weren't sure how they would deal with their capacity this year since they had built up their program and had to cancel last year. So I think it could be very successful, not only for our residents, but also uh, bringing in a uh, outside uh, participation. So the proposal is to rent a uh, ice rink, a full true ice ice rink um, within Mulberry Fields and contract out the labor and the liability for that program to operate within our park. At which point we would, um, you know, attempt to provide additional free programming to kind of supplement that, uh, develop partnerships along the way. I know um, the fire department has a training driver's training exercise every December. And I think that would be a great partnership as well. So there's a lot of opportunities uh, within Zionsville to continue to explore and expand this in this first year. But to uh, get the early bird pricing and make sure we have an ice rink, we need to uh, potentially make that decision tonight before the June 1st kind of calendar turn. So um, I did get a preliminary estimate for the ice rink. which I will share. Sorry, having trouble seeing that. There we are. So uh, the proposal is for the ice rink, the transportation, 
and uh, the staffing of the event by Ice America. Uh, we contacted several uh, ice skating rinks and they had various packages. Uh, some didn't offer full true ice, others didn't have staffing plans. So um, there are additional expenses uh, to consider beyond this. And there's also some places where we can save money. Um, but the total for this operation for the month of December is approximately $207. So I anticipate up to 25,000 additional uh, expenses that we can either uh, mitigate through our operations, absorb with our, our existing funds or uh, set aside with the revenue that we generate. Um, and some preliminary planning of a budget for this uh, amenity. Let me pull that over next. So uh, looking at the calendar and just kind of programming for that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, uh, potentially Wednesday nights in December up until school gets out and then we would do the Monday through Saturday. Um, that gives us approximately 140 hours of programmable ice time. Um, my suggestion is to offer uh, free skate essentially at $14 for, that includes your skate and unlimited time on the ice, uh, knowing that most people you know, won't skate much longer than a half hour to an hour. So um, the rink can host up to 125 people an hour. So looking at kind of our range of what that would generate over the month, we're looking at approximately uh, 156 to $245,000 uh, to kind of offset those initial costs. Now, in addition to that, we could look at uh, private skating events. I know there's already been some interest for uh, youth hockey on the ice and other events like that. We could also uh, advertise the opportunity for businesses to have a private party for their staff if that's what they're seeking to do or other functions like that. And uh, we be began uh, collaborating with uh, other department heads and looking how we're going to market and uh, partner in the community with this. So there are some options for other revenues. Um, on Monday before town council, I was going to request 145,000 from our fund 214, which is our funds that are generated from our programming in our parks. And the goal of this program is to uh, provide this to the community and uh, essentially have a net uh, cost and revenue or even a little bit of revenue added. Um, so it's not, we're, we're looking to Kind of use that as a cash advance from the 214 and then put that back in and knowing this is the first year there will be expenses beyond that that we will have to incur in our operating and general funds so i've also proposed uh 20 000 of additional appropriation from our uh, cash reserves to help um, subsidize some of those unknown costs um, and get this moving so again i apologize that this is pretty preliminary at this point but um we need to have a conversation about the ice rink and whether we want to move forward. Could, could you go back to the expense lines? I, I, I got lost a little bit on how that all added up. Okay, yeah. So basic, at the very bottom, the bottom line is basic holiday ice rink production, $118,000. Yes, and then with uh, Ice America staff and um, some other bells and whistles for operations, that's closer to that two hundred and seven. dollars there would be some other costs we need to incur, like building a subfloor, which I kind of asked for clarity on what that means. It sounds like something our maintenance department could uh, develop in-house. Um, and then there is also lodging for those employees that uh, are here for the duration of December. So again, uh, looking to find our partners in the community, whether that's through the chamber, the uh, tourism bureau, or uh, other sources like that and also seek sponsorships for this event that would not only attract Zionsville, but also the community, the, the larger communities. Questions from other board members? So, uh, you'll be managing this thing, Jared? I yeah, Ice America will be uh, running the show as far as the maintenance and staffing of the ice rink. Uh, there's, there's no way our current uh, staffing levels could operate this event for an entire month. 
but we do want to, you know, program alongside it, obviously have oversight over the entire process and uh, ensure it's a safe and fun event. Um, part of that quote does include the liability insurance. So that's nice to have that on their end rather than ours. Um, I'm sure we might also want to be listed on that policy. Absolutely. One component. Hey, hey Jared, Jared, have, yep. other, have other uh, communities done this in the past using this uh, Ice America company? Uh, Ice America is they very popular. I would need to ask Carmel who they're using. Uh, well, actually, Carmel purchased their own uh, ice rink. So I know that they kind of invested in their operations and then an event management team kind of comes in and assists with their actual operations. So since this is our first year, you know, there's no way we're going to purchase an ice rink, but uh, to at least provide the amenity and break even on it is the goal. So expense wise, if it's 208,000 plus 20 extra, 20,000 extra for us, Plus, I don't know what the lodging might be. So it's 230 plus thousand, a minimum in expenses that we would have, correct? And then our estimated revenue is 100 and without sponsorships, without special events, just from, you know, our, our guesstimate is from 157,000 to 245,000. Correct. Yep. So, so with, yep. um, you know, it's possible we could. You know, even with these estimates, if the revenues came in on the low side, we might be losing uh, sixty, seventy thousand dollars or thereabouts. So that's our kind of our best guess exposure in a in a in a bad situation. I, yeah, if anybody's yeah, we need to take on, I mean, these ice rinks that, are they are very popular and fun and everything. Weather but, is also something you got to take advantage of. You know, think about the weather. So absolutely, and. Uh, and you know, having it only open Wednesday through Saturday uh, offers a couple makeup days in there as well. Um, and then once school comes out, you know, we are doing six days a week, so there's a better chance to kind of recover that. And in the operating Why? fund, how, how much is that? Uh, what kind of balance is in there currently? In the uh, non-reverting. Or the uh, general fund in, in the general in the fund year one hundred four or uh... um, I believe it's around one hundred and fifty. So it, it will bring us way to, you know pretty close to uh, cashing out. But that again is the the philosophy here is that we're we're borrowing it now and paying it back at the end of the year. Right, and in the event that we lost sixty or seventy thousand dollars, it's that would be absorbed in the general fund rather than impacting the uh, non reverting. So. Got it. Do we have the option to open it Sundays as well to gain another day of like another revenue producing day? Absolutely. This is just kind of a preliminary uh, a sketching of kind of what a skeletal hour system would be. Again, if we can sell those private events or even just open up free skate more often, you know, that's going to be more hours that we could uh, incur revenue. And then you said we would have to pay the cost of the subfloor. Yes, yep, that is one expense that was not on there. Because with the uh, current cost of lumber, we might have to pay an additional 200 grand for a subfloor. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> well, um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, saying, I'm joking, but something that yeah. you said for, for the cost of that is um, pretty high right now. Yeah, and, and sand is another option for that. Um, and if this becomes a normal event, maybe we could have a sand volleyball pit we put in the summer and then it's when, you know, ice rink in the winter or something like that. But uh, I was hoping to park. reach out. Yep. Oh. I was just, where in the park is this going to be set up? What are your thoughts? Within Mulberry Fields, they actually, you know, once contracts are signed, they send out their um, supervisor to kind of scout out the best location to place it. So we'll go from there. Um, mm -hmm. Jared, does Ice America run Carmel's rink during their season? No, I believe that's a uh, another event management team. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have Any you already further? talked to the Chamber of Commerce at all, Jared? To no. get yeah, any those kind of indication of the interest from local business owners yeah that conversation is uh forthcoming 
And again, I hope to have a much more fleshed out uh, plan here for our July meeting, our June meeting, sorry. And so but you're asking for authorization to make this commitment now that, so we have to, I mean- That, that is this, something to weigh. Yep. This is it, I mean, right? I mean, there's no turning back once we sign the contract. I mean, yep. yeah. We will have an ice skate uh, rink delivered, so. Right. So just one more question about like the grass. So if we put lumber yeah. subfloor or like sand or whatever down, do we have to then replant grass after it's gone? I'm just curious because I don't know how that would work. Yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah, any uh, maintenance for the following spring that would be required to uh, fix the turf, we would have to address, absolutely. So, I mean, this is looking like, looking like, well, you no, know, what? 275, 280,000 with, if you said, you know, you got 25,000 extra and that doesn't include the subfloor, the subfloor is going to be, what's, what's the size? Um, I think, I don't have that sheet in front of me. I believe it's 60 by 40 or something like that to that extent. That's pretty big. All things to consider, absolutely. Hey, hey Jared, how do you foresee the uh, like the sponsorship roles, like what what type of levels or costs are you anticipating that we could have sponsorship opportunities for? And like, I, I guess I'm trying to see how that might offset some of the some of the costs that we would incur initially. Absolutely, and I think that would be a little forecasting of our expected numbers, um, and then going out and you know securing a title sponsor as well as uh, other levels and developing that. Similar to how we okay. kind of rolled out it, um, our sponsorship. Like not policy. a daily sponsor, like a like a title sponsor hosting the rink, and then uh, okay. It could be fun to do something with Maple Lawn Farmstead right next door. Um, I don't know if they have any active uh, Christmas uh, bazaars or fairs or anything like that, but that I could see, and and they can serve alcohol as well. So. Uh, that would not be some fun uh, cooperation with them. Absolutely. And they were receptive to collaborating. Um, wasn't sure of how much we could successfully accomplish within the next seven months, six months. So I wanted to, you know, keep this year a little simpler and then have more time to expand on it in the following years and keep growing this. But we definitely would want to do it uh, right the first year to get people to come back. Uh, some ideas is, you know, to approach the chamber and see if they would actually like to run to a vendor's square uh, to offer to our local uh, merchants to showcase their uh, products on the on the weekends when we'd have the most traffic. Um, so there's, you know, ways to keep our costs down and also expand the uh, events and opportunities. Okay, how, how yeah, again, this is trying to keep it simple, although there is financial exposure of, you know, maybe $100,000, up to $100,000. Of course, we might make money. Uh, we, you know, my personal feeling is it'd be a lot of fun. It's a great thing for a parks department to be doing, a great place to be doing it. We know these are popular. Um, some great partnership possibilities in this. So, you know, I'm, I'm generally encouraged. Uh, if but, we wanted to stage hockey games, high school hockey games or something, would, would it be set up to do that? Does it have the proper boards and glass and goals and, and all that stuff? I don't believe it would have the, uh, the protective plexiglass. No, uh, that's not included. But um, I wonder if there'd be another way to make that happen. That's a great idea. Figure skating competition. Yeah, even curling. That's a little yeah. bit less impact. Curling, yeah. Curling's a good idea. Love curling. So do you envision having like a multi-organizational uh, kind of like idea team to kind of put this together if we if it is approved? To yeah. Try and bring in ideas from all different facets of the community. Yeah, uh, moving forward, we would definitely want to partner in ways that made sense and uh, strengthen this. Like I said, uh, the chamber already has those contacts with the merchants and just seeing how receptive they would be to be showcasing, you know, 
on within our event. Uh, we could also reach out to Lions uh, Club, see if they're willing. Again, Maple Lawn was receptive initially uh, when we started some of these talks. So there could be a partnership there as well. Yeah, I, I personally, I'm, I'm with Tim. I like the idea. It sounds like a lot of fun. I think, I think the, uh, I think the vendor thing is a, is a, is a big deal. To, you know, all the times I've been to the Carmel location, you know, the experience of, you know, grabbing a hot chocolate after the skate and hanging people hanging around watching other people. I mean, that's, that's all part of it. So I think if we're going to just have an ice skating rink in the middle of Mulberry fields. It's going to feel a little bit differently than if we get other people, you know, other groups involved and create more of an experience. And so if you feel like this is enough time to create the experience here in Zionsville, then I am for it. If you feel like, you know, it's rushing it a bit in year one, it would just look like a, you know, like a, 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 an ice rink in the middle of the parking lot, then, you know, maybe we revisit this for next year. But if you think we can get everybody on board, then uh, like I said, I, I, I think it's, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, and you know these talks have began internally, and we're we're kind of assembling our task force to move this forward and really get the green light. But uh, securing funding was one of those first uh, components. All, All right. right, is there just uh, from a historical uh, perspective? Yeah, I remember the the Lions Club did do a smaller scale, and I think mm -hmm. it was a synthetic ice ring for when the Super Bowl was here. So it might be worth checking with them just to see, you know, what their experience was in terms of, of the participation, you know, and whether they were able to make it work financially. I'm sure it wasn't anything near the magnitude of this. I mean, this looks similar to what's in Carmel from what I've seen on their website. And it sounds like they can do it all. I mean, they can do this in the middle of Las Vegas. They can do this when it, even after the, even have cold weather to do it. So it looks like they're, capable of, of anything having to do with ice. Uh, I think it's just a question of whether we're willing to take the risk on financially. And, and that's, I mean, I, wouldn't this also fit with our new recreation plans? Uh, certainly we haven't had recreation in, in the winter like this before. So I'm excited about that. And there are, you know, there will be continued revenue going into the 214 account throughout the year. Uh, we do have our Barnes and Brews event coming up this summer. Where we're hoping to have a great turnout for that. Um, we also have shelter reservations, which are picking up in popularity. Um, so as the, these recreational offerings uh, continue to snowball, you know, we'll have more of these funds snowball. <laughs> to, uh, to uh, plan for these events in the future. It's just kind of this initial investment, uh, which does have a little bit more risk. What if our greatest hopes are realized and this becomes outrageously popular uh is there a problem parking at the middle school or over at the church across the street i mean if we if we need overflow parking absolutely those are both conversations that have uh, started we've reached out so we'll, we'll follow up with that um we've also floated the idea of a trolley to get people from the village uh offering incentives to uh, use the rail trail to get there and uh, receive a discount so there's a lot of options we can do to try to address that and uh Zionsville does have a history of special events in our town. We just haven't hosted many ourselves. So we have a lot of knowledge of how these things operate and how we can have a successful event. Good. So what do you seek from the board? A motion to authorize you to enter into an agreement with ICE America, uh, substantially as outlined to us for up to $210,000, $208,000, $210,000? Yes, and the other component was that the additional appropriation request with town council for the 145,000 and then the 20,250. So 20,000 from our cash reserves within the general fund and then 145 from our 214 fund. You need our, again, I don't. That, that's I, more of just a recommendation yeah. and a, uh, yeah. a blessing. I think it takes a motion. What's that? Russ? It takes a motion, you know, anytime we're asking the town council to make an appropriation, that would, that would be a motion coming from our board, but also I think just to, to approve. I mean, it sounds to me like there's still some things that, that Jared wants to confirm before this is a definite go, but, but, you know, he's asking 
for the board's approval to, to you know, continue working on it, which means committing to it if, if everything checks out, as I understand it. What's the drop dead date? Uh, June 1st to receive the uh, early bird special and to hold on to the rink essentially after that, they kind of will not have our place in line anymore. So it's on hold for the rest of the month and then. All right, so is there a motion to authorize Jared to negotiate, complete negotiations with Ice America for a winter ice facility that could uh, in, involve up to $208,000 and to ask town council to authorize our use of $145,000 from our operating fund. Again, this is, what, what fund is that again? Fund 214, the non-reverting operating. And twenty thousand dollars from general. Uh, oh, well, that's our. Do we need uh, town council authority for that twenty thousand from our general? Yeah, because it would still be an additional appropriation from the budget that was. Uh, okay, plus a twenty thousand uh, dollar parks general fund appropriation. Is there such a motion? Before, hey, before you ask the motion, real quick, a quick question. I don't know the funds as well as I probably should, but in the event that this doesn't uh, do what we forecast, what what is it impact in first quarter of 2022 with that fund being reduced and what we can pay back? Are there any you know immediate impacts that would have on our programming or projects or anything like that? So this year we uh, authorized 25000 from that fund, and that was for um, – uh, the summer camps, um, some contractual services and technology service fees, um, which are all just kind of more of our programming costs. Um, so uh, I'm confident that, you know, unless we were not able to get this event off the ground at all, uh, there would be some revenue to offset that ask, absolutely. Um, but since we use such a small percentage of what was in that account for our annual uh, operations, I uh, think we're going to be able to offset that with the revenue between now and then as well. So, so to answer Wollenberg's question, so Fund 214 currently has in it about $145,000? 150 some. 150 some thousand dollars. Last year, we required $25,000 from that fund to... Uh, fund uh, certain startups of summer camps or recreational programming. So that's kind of the, uh, so, I mean, if we lost all everything from that fund, we, we would uh, not have $25,000, $35,000 to help uh, seed recreational programming uh, moving forward. So we, you know, it, it appears that that's the minimum of what we require in that fund to, to just keep things rolling on recreational programming. Right. And I think it's worth mentioning that within the general fund this year, we did beef up our uh, um, salary kind of allocation and we won't be using that full amount just to do to hiring dates and kind of the projected hours we would use. And the fact that the calendar year has progressed so far. So we will have, you know, a percentage of that, that we budgeted that we won't be uh, mm -hmm. utilizing this year. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Well, if there's no more questions, I can make a motion, Tim, if we're ready. Okay. Go ahead, John. We'll, we'll try so to help make you. A motion. Go ahead. No, we'll, I've said, we'll try to help you uh, uh, polish or frame the, frame the motion, but go ahead. You yeah, I'm, go. Sure, I'm sure I'll need Rogers, Rogers help on this, but uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and make the motion that we allow Jared to uh, confirm with ice America to proceed with the, rink for the month of December and allow him to, uh, I guess, take that amount to town council to confirm the appropriation that we need from the fund to allocate uh, for this event. Uh, Roger, feel free to add what I missed. I would second that motion, uh, although I would suggest that 
because there are so many moving parts here that perhaps a legal review would be prudent before any signatures are put to paper. John Wallenberg, do you uh, accept a legal review? Uh... I, I accept that amendment, good idea. All right, motion clear. Any other questions or comments? All right, we'll do a roll call vote of the, of the uh, motion to proceed with Ice America. For a winner, Carnival Ice Rink, John Stair. Aye. John Wallenberg. Aye. Jill Pack. Aye. John Solovich. Aye. Aaron Bidwell. Aye. I also vote aye, so the motion carries six in the affirmative and zero against. All right, Jared. Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, let us know next month uh, how it's going or give us an update. Absolutely. I'll get to work. And what we can uh, do to help help with the carnival. All right, let's move on to old business. And uh, only one item, but it's a big item. So again, Trish uh, McClellan is here. Uh, Overly Warman Park. All right. I would say, uh, I, I guess I'll tee, tee this up that uh, in our last meeting uh we were investigating uh adding a dog park to overly warman park uh jared uh liaised with the neighborhood association the homeowners association and we were uh somewhat surprised of the negative reaction of a majority of a maybe i don't know vast majority but a majority of those polled in their HOA Facebook page, and uh, and some you know a lot of, a lot of thought went into uh, uh, Montero residents providing us comments. Uh, you know the design issues I think were something that Trish and Jared were uh, could have overcome. However, you know there's the uncertainty of parking. There's the uh, the history behind the design of Overly Warman Park. Uh, and, you know, we, we, you know, if somebody says, oh, we don't want to disc golf, you know, we can, we always say, listen, this has been a five, six year process with this. So they were kind of turning that rightly. So I, again, I, I, I took some, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I thought that was a good point they were making that this was kind of, kind of late in the game to be uh, adding uh, a feature like this. So I think Jared uh, and I and others involved met with uh, some of the residents, but at this point, uh, we've decided, at least at this point, not to go forward with the dog park and to continue, uh, not to do a change order with HIS constructors and to continue on, on course with the current contract. Jared, do you have anything that you would like to add to that? Correct, I would, I would just like to add then uh, a little bit after we kind of made the decision. Some of the support did start trickling in. So it is a little bit more maybe split than we thought, but I think the bigger thing is we still do have capacity at Heritage Trail um, and kind of our window for cost savings is closing. So to seize that opportunity has kind of slipped through our hands. So I think it's best to either uh, just move forward as planned. What about right. the, the grading? Cause I know the, the big part was the grading. So we not, we're not leaving it as is. Yeah, that's the uh, the window that's kind of slipped by was the biggest portion, which was the grading savings. So, yeah, I, I would like to thank the Montero Homeowners Association for their input and quick work in in trying to uh, yeah provide comments for for the proposal. All right, other overly warm and park update, Jared and Trish. Yeah, there are a couple of. Uh, much more minor uh, change orders that I just wanted to bring before you like I did in the previous month, just to um, kind of have that open door, you know, of information. So some of these are required. Um, and I'll attempt to share my screen again. So. Um, at the previous Parks Board meeting, we did uh, approve the uh, kind of that scenic lookout change order, as well as the stones to improve the uh, natural uh, paths towards the more flooded area in the back. Um, 
Now I'd like to bring forward two new uh, change orders. And again, these are just components of what will be crafted as the next change order. So they're components of that larger uh, conversation with HIS and that signing. So um, one of them entails the implementation of a whisper pump. Um, originally, the contractor was going to use a pump to divert the stream when we uh, begin to make improvements uh, in overly warm park. Um, just to be a good neighbor to Vonterra, um, I think it's best to kind of see uh, one of these whisper pumps since it will be running 24 seven for an extended period of time. Um, we don't wanna, you know, incur any noise complaints or anything like that and just be a good neighbor overall. So for the small nominal fee, and again, I'm sorry, I can't read the actual numbers on the screen. Uh, it's $2,917. So that would be the cost incurred to uh, use this quiet, much quieter pump than the existing kind of uh, diesel louder pump. Um, and the other uh, change order to talk about tonight was actually required within our uh, grant funding. And that is to uh, make a couple of revisions to the parking lot plan. And that involves um, plastic uh, bumpers for vehicles as well as another entrance ramp uh, ADA entrance. So that there's a lot less wiggle room in and uh, it's something that we do need to uh, implement uh, to secure those grant funds. And Trisha, I don't know if there's anything you'd like to add or. So they were included in the, they were included in the grant application, these sort of smaller items. We didn't know about them when we put the project out to bid, we just, <laughs> found out once that you know it was approved and we got all the documentation. So that's why it's coming after rather than getting it before. There are a few on the north section of the rail trail that we know are part of the grant that we will include in the construction documents, but that's why those were not included. It's the price we pay to win a $1.8 million. <laughs> well, actually it's, uh, this is for the LW the, for the smaller grant. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I believe that was around 3000 and some is a small price to pay for that $200,000 grant. Yeah. Right. Any questions? Again, these are under $5,000. So my understanding is you're, you're free to uh, authorize and implement these change orders of this size. But uh, yeah, any questions from board members? And I just wanted to, uh, give kind of a, a preview, there will be one more uh, larger change. And that is just due to the existing conditions, we're going to kind of change the scope of the boardwalk and tuck it a little bit more into the banks, uh, which is going to actually give us some cost savings. So we'll be able to offset some of those changes that we're experiencing uh, with that change of plan. And that'll be forthcoming. Great, it's exciting. I took a walk uh, in the disc golf area uh, late this afternoon. Boy, is that pretty. I, I had not been all the way back there. You end up almost to eight, you know, to the interstate and uh, very, very scenic. I can't imagine uh, flinging uh, discs around in there. So there's still <laughs> challenges for our disc golf designer, Tricia, but, uh, but it was, uh, it was uh, you know, they uh, bulldozed the, the the main path and a couple of subsidiary paths back there. So it was really, really very pretty. All right, anything else on Overly Warman Park? Uh, everything is moving ahead as scheduled and we're still looking at that tentative uh, fall opening. All right, are there any other board related items tonight? I can't hear you, Joe. Sarah Moore. Oh, Sarah Moore. Okay, Sarah Moore, welcome. Thanks. You missed all the action. We're just about done. But, uh, that's, all, that's all right. Uh, all right, Sarah's here for claims. I'm sure she has lots of questions on the claims. Uh, okay, so claims came in a little late. Um, and... Uh, but they have been submitted. I think you've all received them via email, correct, today? Yes. Um, so are there any questions or comments on claims? 
And I apologize about that tight timeline before the meeting. Uh, we are changing systems, so that was part of that delay. Is there a motion to approve claims as submitted? Uh, I'll make the motion that we approve claims as submitted. Vice President Stair has made the motion to approve claims. Is there a second? I'll second. Was that Sarah Moore? It was. I was trying to. All right, Sarah Moore has <laughs> seconded John's motion to approve. All right. Any other questions on claims? If not, I'll do a roll call vote. John Stair. Aye. John Wallenberg. Aye. Jill Pack. Aye. John Solovich. Aye. John, Sol John Solovich uh, votes aye. Aaron Bidwell. Aye. Sarah Moore. Aye. I also vote aye. So the motion passes with unanimously seven in the affirmative. All right, it's time to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Jill Pack seconds second. it. Uh, there was a third by John Solovich, I think. Uh, okay, I vote aye. John Stair. Aye. John Wallenberg. Aye. Jill Pack. Aye. John Solovich. Aye. Eric Bidwell. Aye. Sarah Moore. Aye. I thought she would, uh, she wanted more since she came late, but I guess not. All right. So our next meeting will be June 9th, 2021. So thanks. Uh, yeah. Any quick feedback on our hybrid format? This isn't an official meeting, but it's difficult to get back in the groove here live. And, and those of you participating, uh, Telephonically, any feedback from you on on how you know how we can improve things or how it's going or how you know are you feeling a part of the the meeting? Yeah, the phone was fine. It's just when you call in via the Zoom link that Joe sent, the uh, you need to star six nine to mute and unmute versus the traditional just hitting the mute button. So I was struggling with that early on, as all can probably see. Okay, did you get that, Joe Rust? What's that? There's, there's nothing, to be done with calls. nothing we can do about that. Okay. It's probably less Joe's fault, more tech, more uh, user error. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Right, we'll see you. see you next month.